David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. All right, you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, this is going to be another tested video. What is a tested video? This is where we take actual items, the sartorial kit that many of us have collected or that we're contemplating about, and we test it out in the real wild. And today we've got one that I, I think it's probably the most asked for next to like jackets, and that is sweaters. Yes, it's that time of year, depending on when you're seeing this, where sweaters, well, they become a, just a part of your everyday grab, your everyday carry, if you will. And so we've got to talk about Bond sweaters, and I've got a collection of them that we're going to go through. But, but we need some guidelines. We need some parameters, uh, housekeeping rules of engagement. And this is important because in the last one that we did, we, we set up a format where we talked about the different aspects of the items. With the sweaters, we've got to talk about some very basic things. First of all, sweater, what does it do for you? Well, it, it, it keeps you warm. It keeps you comfortable. So we are going to be talking about warmth. And a part of that is we're going to wear these sweaters out in the wild. We've just had a huge dumping of snow, 18 to 19 inches, sleet, and ice, and we're gonna head out into it. A Little bit of precip still coming down, but we're gonna find out how these feel. Now, slow it down a little bit. I know some of these were made for warmth, and some of these are just made for fashion or style and not for warmth. We're not gonna ding them for that. We just want you to have as much information. But we're also gonna be talking about the feel and function. That's the two Fs that we sometimes talk about is, are these things that you could really wear? out in the wild, or are they just for looks? They're not very comfortable. The movement is restricted. And look, Bond is an action-oriented hero, and you've gotta be an action-oriented hero many times in these outfits, or at least comfortable. So are these comfortable? How is the movement on these in the real world? And the other one that we've gotta do, and look, we're fans, the Bond Experience, it's a channel that talks about this, this kind of invisible hobby that gets in our heads psychologically, what does this do as far as the accuracy of connecting it to the movie that it represents? And a part of that is the psychology of how does it make you feel? Does it give you that invisible bond moment? Does it transport you? Does it allow you to escape? Because that's, that's kind of the rooted fun of all this. It's great to be associated with great brands and have great clothing items, but you need to also kind of feel that bond experience, that bond moment. I mean, that's, that's at the crux of it. Okay. One more little asterisk. You're like, David, come on, get on with it. One more little asterisk. In many cases, a lot of the sweaters we're gonna be talking about were paired with jackets. We're not going to have the jackets and coats on this. We're gonna to try to focus on the sweater. Sometimes they did have shirts or undershirts underneath. We are going to have those included to kind of complete the sweater look, but it really has to be about the sweater. And again, this environment, I'm telling you right now, take a look. We just had this big dumping. Um, it's perfect for this. And you know something, as you could tell by what I'm wearing and in front of this, we're gonna get started right now. Okay, what an appropriate sweater to start with because Die Another Day, especially this particular scene in Die Another Day, Bond, Pierce Brosnan, was wearing this sweater in an ice palace, ice hotel, setting. So what an appropriate way to really kind of start out with this weather. And by the way, just so you know, and you're all going to be screaming at me for not wearing gloves and a hat, but it is about, I would say, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. You could probably see some precip coming down. That's not after effects. This is real. This is what we do with the Bond experience. And this is why I don't take a psych test because I would fail. Let's get on with it. This sweater is a medium. It's from NPL. This is NPL's homage to Die Another Day and Bond's sweater. Now, First thing to note is this is a 50% fine merino, super soft merino, 50% of their patented cashmere, which you know about NPL cashmere. If you don't, I've got about a thousand videos up on this. But what I loved about this, this is a size medium, just as a reminder, how could you forget? I'm a 41 up here, I'm a 31 here, and the medium fits perfectly. You know, we talk about how this makes you feel and fit. And one thing to note is, with all these sweaters, I'm wearing these puppy tooth slacks with all of them just to kind of create an equilibrium um, and equality of these sweaters and how they look. But this really matches perfectly. 
So we've got to talk about feel and function. Movability, there's no undershirt on here. Obviously there's no jacket. Movability wise, I feel like I can do anything. The, the, the wool itself is very soft. And that's a big thing where people say, look, the wool, you know, is it harsh? Does it bite into you? Does it barb? I think it's that mixture of the fine merino wool and the cashmere that makes this beautifully comfortable. Does it capture the moment of the movie? Yeah, it does. It's got that, I hope you can see it in the light. Look at that with the little bits of snow. How authentic is that? Uh, it's got this like kind of like lightish charcoal gray. It's not dark. You know, it's not almost black. It's, it's that dark charcoal gray like you see in the movie. And the one that they had in the movie has not been made since the movie, since 2001, 2002. So this is our only way to capture it. Now, a lot of you are saying like, David, die another day. Really? Yes. Well, because, you know, say what you will about the storyline or the, the second half of the movie from a sartorial aspect, from a clothing aspect, it really is phenomenal. So this really ticks off all the things because there's some great focus of fashion in that movie. Now, wait a minute. I'm not shivering here. What's going on? Well, um, I've been out here setting up the camera. This is the first shot outside and I'm not shivering. I'm not cold. Hands are a little tingly. That's okay. I'm, you know, I've got Russian background, so I'm pretty hardy, but I'm not cold. And that is because of this, you know, wool, this being this natural fiber breathes very well, but it also really condenses and keeps the heat, equalizes it across my body. So from a warmth standpoint, from an emotional connection to a movie that I'm like meh about, but a badass scene and a badass Brosnan moment altogether, and form and function, this one gets pretty damn high marks, but we got to see where it stacks up to all the others. Come on, come on. Who doesn't like a little bit of Roger Moore fashion? I mean, you remember this scene. I'm sure that this sweater and vest, remember we talked about, you know, a certain pairing that was going to go on for this testing. Now this sweater and vest was seen towards the end of For Your Eyes Only when Bond is climbing up the mountaintop. It's become iconic with that particular movie and it's a great movie because it's got that kind of seriousness tone to it. It's got some really interesting writing. It's got some Fleming S, but we're not here to talk about the movie. We're here to talk about the sweater. This combination is another one from N. Peel. And out of all the ones that they have done as far as homages, if you will, not direct replicas, but homages. This one comes, I think, the closest. And we've talked about it before, but you know, even the marled sweater right here, which is incredibly soft, and this sweater vest. I mean, look at look at the patching on the sweater vest, the quilting. I'll get back over here. This just fits great. And we've got to talk about form and function because if we think about this moment, if we really want to capture this moment from this film, we've got to think about could I mountain climb in this? I mean, you know, it might not be snowing like this, but could I actually be climbing a mountain? And the answer would be yes, <laughs> you really could. I mean, there is such incredible movement in here. Why am I running like Daniel Craig if I'm wearing Roger Moore? Nobody knows, nobody knows. Uh, the neighbors don't know, no, they're used to this. But the reality is, is that this is incredibly warm. This is not going to surprise you. You probably saw me in this first approach and you were like, I don't even talk about warmth. This, this is to be made. This is made to be worn outside, probably in this weather, maybe slightly, slightly warmer if I was to stay out here for an extended amount of time. But testing it out here like this, I feel, what's the word? I, I feel cozy. I mean, there's no other word to use. I actually feel cozy in this. So when I think about that kind of coziness, um, that really kind of takes me back because from a Roger Moore standpoint, again, that psychology of wearing something like that invisible bond, I was brought up with Roger Moore. So a connection to him, even a sartorial one is comfortable. It's relaxing. It's nostalgic. We talked about the power of nostalgia and so much that we do. When putting on this, I'm getting a rush of that. Maybe that's part of the warmth. Maybe it's not just physical, maybe it's mental. I'll let you just dwell on that. But form, function, connection to bond and comfort level, this also gets incredibly high marks. But let's, let's see what's next. Let the sky fall, let it, no, no, I'm sorry. I've lost too many followers that way by singing to you. We're here.
we're at Skyfall. We're really not. We're in Pennsylvania, but I'm wearing the Skyfall end peel top that he wears at the end of the movie when he's at his ancestral home. I'm even tied it with the All Saints uh, correct kind of undergarment. It's like a thermal shirt, but it's not thermal. It's lightweight. And I have a confession. And I think, I think we've known each other long enough. I can say these things to you. I'm ashamed because I haven't worn this in years. And you know, for this video, I took it out of my closet and kind of cleaned it off, got it ready, put it on. And I'm, I'm hitting myself in the head. And this is what everybody should do. This is so comfortable. <laughs> it's so soft. Again, it's that 100% that cashmere. It's that wonderful kind of Daniel Craig blue that they gravitated to in the beginning that really kicked off NPL's relationship with James Bond all these years later that we are enjoying but I haven't worn it in a long time. I just don't gravitate to it. It's almost like, you know, kind of a new bond. You know, people don't typically go back to Brosnan because they're focused on Craig. I'm getting the sense with these sweaters as, as, as I'm reawakening these sweaters in my collection just by doing this, I'm finding that I just kind of missed it. So that was ice falling off the roof, by the way, and we're not gonna cut that out because this is really tested in the environment. So. As you can imagine, this is not going to be any surprise. From a warm standpoint, I give this very good. Now, interestingly enough, it is not as warm as the Die Another Day sweater. That one, whether it's the way it's made or the blend of the merino wool, has more warmth. And that's even with wearing this shirt underneath. And it could be the shirt underneath that's also creating not as great a warmth level. Is that even technically correct? Who knows? But I'm just telling you that um, I give this probably a B on the warmth level. And again, it's made to be worn with a jacket. Now, if I had the barber jacket, the, the coat on over, over this, I could be out here for quite a long time. Maybe, maybe some gloves would be nice, David. Maybe a nice Tom Ford scarf. Wouldn't that be a miraculous? But it's hard to argue the connection back to Daniel Craig's Skyfall Bond in this because it is an, a replica. It is the exact piece, thread by thread by thread. It's not an homage piece like some of the other ones. It is a direct replica. So tied that with this, the actual thing, if I had the right uh, cords on and the right jacket, it would be, a lot of people say this, it would be nearly cosplay. When you have something cosplay, if you don't truly make it your own, it's a costume. So one of the things you've got to be careful in this is, are you dressing as a costume from Skyfall? And is it giving you that feeling? And by the way, there's no right or wrong here, no judgment calls. Just for me, I would want to make this my own. So I might pair this with um, a white colored uh, shirt underneath this to give it a kind of a look or, or even like a lighter blue, something to break it up a little bit more just to make it my own. But I'm so happy I discovered this one because it still gets high marks. Now, I would imagine that the coldness of space feels very similar to this. No, no, it's, it's going to be much colder, trust me. But this is the Moonraker Homage Top. Now, this is an interesting one to talk about with sweaters because obviously the original shirt from Moonraker was not a sweater, but Olimar Brown reimagined their homage piece to it is a sweater top. It is merino wool, um, obviously from movement and form and function because it's merino wool and it's thinner. It's got this nice zip to it and everything like that. Uh, movement wise, it's unrestricted. Of course it is. This is an action oriented top. Now from a sweater standpoint, is it supposed to exist out here in the open tundra, so to speak, the Ozarks? No, it's supposed to be paired underneath and with a nice, you know, heavy coat on top of it not like this. So from a cold standpoint, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to wrapping this one up. It's, it's not giving me that warmth, but it's not supposed to. That's the asterisk we have to put on all these. From a look standpoint, it is an homage piece. You know, the original was a shirt. It has quite a few differences, but I love it. I mean, to me, this is, you know, what's nice about this is you could go out into the wild and this becomes truly an invisible bond. No one's going to say that's the Moonraker shirt. It's just a cool zip shirt, which kind of harkens back to the to the 60s and 70s where zip shirts were de rigueur. And also the cut of it, you know, it's very flattering. It's got that modern-esque style, but it also has that 60s, 70s modern style that really kind of transcends very well to today. So I give it really great from a fashion and style standpoint. Warmth is like this, movement unrestricted. 
This isn't supposed to be out here. Let's, let's go back inside. Not exactly golf weather. So this is the homage piece from and peel it. I'm stepping through the snow. This is definitely not golf weather. Four. It's four degrees out, so that's appropriate. Listen, I fully expected to come out here with this cotton mock turtleneck that NPL came out with and this cashmere top and be absolutely freezing with this tested of this. Because look, it's, it's an homage to a golf top. It's not supposed to be worn out in the winter. I'm happily surprised. I'm warmly and toastily is that a word? Look it up. Surprise, because this is keeping me warm. It's very comfortable, and we've got to talk about this because I think it's the layers. You know, cotton itself, everybody used to gravitate to cotton. I think nowadays they're, they're more going to other fabrics like good cashmere's and wools and silks and things like that, which is great to kind of mix it up. You know, 98% of our stuff is, is probably still cotton, but the cotton mixed with the cashmere is creating a layer of warmth that's pretty undeniable. My whole body, my arms, um, my back, everything is just really toasting. I've been out here for a while setting the camera back up again. Each time that I do this, I reset the camera up so it doesn't stand here in the snow and be destroyed. So what I'm finding out is a couple of things. First of all, I'd be hard pressed to just jump out and go, Danielle, we're going to take a, a nice walk and I'm going to wear this out in this weather. I'm going to stop short of that, but it is keeping me warmer than expected. So it's exceeding my expectation of warmth. It's not, it's not the highest level, no, but it is exceeding that. From a movement standpoint, it's good, but I wouldn't say it's great. And that's the interesting part. I think um, because of the two different layers, it's not that it's restricted in any um, in any imagination here, but what it's doing is it's not giving me that full restriction that I would want, probably because of the multiple layers. It could also be the size of the turtleneck that I took. Who knows? Who knows? This is a medium. This is a small cell. That also being said, from a standpoint of connecting it with George Lazenby and uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, it connects with me, but I think it's because I've been born and raised in the world of NPL and the launches and seeing this. I wouldn't automatically say, ah, okay, this is the jacket that he wears, because the jacket is very different than this sweater. The look, the color, this fawn colored brown matched with the orange, that color scheme is very Honor Majesty's Secret Service, very to that scene. But I'd have to be a diehard Bond fan. I think this is, this is the sweater outfit, if you will, for the diehard Bond fan that says, you know what, I love Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Um, I want a moderate to medium amount of warmth, and I want that, that, that kind of connection with a decent amount of restriction. I think that's the parameters with this setting. So I submit to you a very simple question. Is there anything more style iconic in any genre, in any film, in any walks of life than just a good old plain black turtle turtleneck. Tie that in N. Peel's homage to Live and Let Die, and I think you've got kind of a winning formula here. Uh, this obviously traditional, very traditional black turtleneck. It's not charcoal, it is black. It is just like the one in the film. I think the one in the film fits a little bit tighter. This is a medium. You know, it's not shrink wrapped on me, as you can see the fit, nor would I want it to. This is something that I would put, obviously, under a jacket. It is 100% cashmere, and it is softer than butter. I mean, this is, you know, there's a couple of my cashmere tops that are just like, it's got the hand feel that you really want. Comfort level-wise, zero restriction. I feel like I could barrel, barrel. I feel like I could battle Baron Samadhi in this. I really could. Mr. Big, not so much. No, he would definitely take me. I mean, just psh, flat out. But... This thing, from a comfort level, from a warmth level, it's hitting all those things, and yet it's incredibly thin. I don't have an undershirt underneath this. It's me, the turtleneck, and the snow, and that's pretty much it. And so if I tied this in with even just a moderate jacket, this thing would test incredibly high. Then we've got to connect this to the fact that whether it's Archer or Mission Impossible or whatever your favorite spy genre, and then tie it also back to Roger Moore's Live and Let Die, my favorite Roger Moore Bond film. I mean, this thing goes into the stratosphere. I mean, this, is, this one's going to be hard to beat uh, if you start to look at all the parameters that we've set up. So the Live and Let Die one, out in the wild from NPL, yeah, 
Yeah, let, let's see if the competitors can knock it off its pedestal. So Daniel Craig, Spectre. Now, it's a very divisive movie. Some people love it, some people defend it. Other people just love to take the mickey out of it. Look, it's a Bond film. We've got to really just accept it, all warts and all. One thing that you really can't say, though, with a lot of validity is the clothing in it is bad. No, it's really good, and a lot of us have. Um, either, you know, frugal bond moments from it or ones like this that are like dead on because they're the actual thread by thread replicas from the movie that NPL did. This is the one that was under Bond's outfit. If you remember in the film, you know, it's not, it doesn't look good on a form. It's when he's in Solden and he's talking to Madeline and he's got that great Tom Ford top on. And of course, this one right here is the one that he wears at the end of the movie. I'll put it over here so you can see a shot of it. And it's also on the poster, that really iconic poster that just smacked of live and let die. So we've got to talk about this because obviously, as you can see the way, this is, this is made to be much more form fitting and it is, right? This, this is to really made to hug to your body as opposed to some of the other ones that should fit but not be overly fitted. I mean, look at the arms, the way this fits on the arms. And again, incredibly soft, 100% cashmere. Another little surprise. I thought for sure this wasn't as thick. I'd be a little bit cold. I've been out here for about 15 minutes. I'd actually take a call out here and I'm warm. Um, so maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe, maybe my blood plasma level from living in the Northeast and my, and my heritage and background has made my blood level plasma so thick that this is not an adequate test. I'm actually starting to question the science of this because I feel great, or maybe because I'm moving so quickly to try on sweaters. So have I, have I totally neutralized and negated this test? No, it's James Bond, we gotta pretend. You know, suspend your disbelief, if you will. Just go with it, if you, right? So this frame and move of motion, incredible. Does it connect me back to Bond? Well, how can it not? It's the actual thing. Now I'll say this. I don't put this on and go, James Bond, Spectre. I don't, I just, you know, there are so many other iconic sweaters that I equate to James Bond. This is not one. This is almost like the utility piece of James Bond. Utility piece, meaning if I wear it under something that isn't James Bond-ish, I have that little invisible moment, but it's underneath. It's, it, it, it's almost like the equation I can use is when a woman wears lingerie and only she knows, and only she has to know because she knows there's something sexy underneath and it's her little hidden secret. For me, if I wore this underneath something else, it'd be my little, dare I say, sexy Bond secret. So there it is, accoutrements, the agent secret. Take it for what it's worth. Okay, boy, did I wear the right watch with this top. Of course, you know this from the poster from No Time to Die. It is the Commando Army No Time to Die top that we see in the trailers, on the posters, and I'm wearing this. And listen, Bond Connection. We haven't seen everything, quite frankly, maybe even anything from No Time to Die that we can really say, ah, this scene's going to be badass, or, or this is gonna be incredible. However, there are badass looks, and everybody's been asking for some sort of Commander Bond or Commando Bond, or Mission Bond, all these things, this is the top for that. I mean, this really is like a woolly pulley, but made in a modern Bond form by N. Peel. It's got that incredible feel to it. It's got all the lines and patches that one would need to really replicate that from the movie. And I know that they worked incredibly hard with the designer Siderat on this look, on the color of it, the feel, the, the way it drapes, the falls, even the ties, I mean, just everything. And of course, underneath, I've got the rag and bone to kind of complete that look. So, huh, I mean, does it go without saying, this is incredibly warm. It could be the warmest. And why is it the warmest? Well, because mostly the way it hits the throat, and you can see in some of the side shots with Daniel Craig, the way it hits the throat too, it's, it's very high on in the Adam's apple. And it's because of this kind of like boat neck here, this kind of scalloping that goes on. It comes up very high on the neck. This was made specifically so when you pull this, it actually pulls this opening closed. It's specifically made, the original ones, to keep people warm 
on ships, out in the ocean, out in the cold, and you know, in weather much, much harsher than this. So of course, this is going to be warm. I would say this, out of all the ones I've tried on, is probably the one that I could wear without a jacket and probably be just fine. The more I kind of warm up, you know, the, the warmer I'm get, the more comfortable I'm getting. It's got good range of motion, probably not the best range of motion, maybe because of, of the top area here. I mean, I can move just fine, don't get me wrong. But if I gave other ones like a 10, I would give this like, you know, a, a, an eight and a half, nine, if you will, as far as movement is concerned. But from a connection to this new movie, I remember so well getting this and just feeling like I had a piece of the movie. Like we couldn't have the movie, we will have the movie, but we don't have it yet, but I have a piece of the movie. I mean, this to me was one of the clothing items from No Time to Die that I actually felt like I had something from No Time to Die, mostly because of the poster, the image, and of course, you know, great company that puts a lot of heart into it. So this one does get high marks all around. There's been a lot of discussion about, well, okay, so is that something that you could actually wear out in the wild? And I've seen with my own two eyes, a lot of people wear this out in the wild, paired with different things, and it looks great. I mean, it does have that military, milit, military, militant, not militant, that's a totally wrong word, a military look to it, those lines, and obviously the patches and the way it looks, and for those that actually wore this in the military, if you know, you know. But beyond that, for 95% of the people seeing this, it's just a great sweater that has some very interesting lines, and damn it, it's something unique. Now, I know many of you were waiting for this one. You're like, David, you're going to be testing sweaters? Where, where is the Tom Ford Quantum of Solace one that inarguably launched a thousand different sweaters? Here it is. And this is not a replica, and it's not even a second or third generation Tom Ford. This is the original one that I purchased back at the time of the movie, and uh, fits great. And again, this is one of these that... Um, I do take it out from time to time. I probably wear it at least a few times a year, but with this video, I'm, I'm actually gonna be wearing it more. I'm gonna be putting it back in my regular staple. And you're like, all right, what, what did it for you? I mean, you, you, you tie it with the Tom Ford high collared shirt and suddenly you're transported back to that movie. And I've got a lot of heart for that movie. Had that debate with Calvin Dyson, which I'm, I'm sure you've seen. And uh, he graciously lost. He's amazing. No, it was, a, it was a draw. But this sweater, it's just so iconic. It's so amazingly of the Daniel Craig era. And yet it screams Steve McQueen and some of the more classic, classic looks that we've come to know and love throughout the years. Plus, it's pretty warm. I mean, it's that fine merino wool, but I am perfectly fine out here. I could probably languish for a good hour, and then I might get a little bit cold. Certainly not as warm as some of the more, you know, Roger Moore-ish ones that we talked about earlier. But from a style standpoint, from, you know, something I'll take out when I'm 95, knock down wood, years old, and it's still going to look great, and it's still going to look like of a wonderful style as opposed to fashion, this one's really, really hard to beat. And it's got that softness, it's got the patch pockets. I mean, you know, in a situation where everybody's trying to relax a little bit and yet still keep that formal atmosphere, this is really good. It fits in the arms perfectly. And it's one of these things that it's got touchability. It's got that hand. The connection from a mentally standpoint to Bond, well, it's probably because why most of you have at least something that looks like this in your closet. So it's hard to deny it is a Bond-ish look. Movability, it's fantastic. When they say fine merino wool, it is fine. I mean, it is beautifully luxurious, so it moves incredibly well. Plus, it's got that connection. Yeah, it ticks off all the boxes. So it's probably within, I would say, the top two or three of this entire experiment. Well, hard to argue that the puppy tooth pants that I wear with this is incredibly appropriate because Daniel Craig wears those with this sweater when he visits Mr. White. You know the scene. It's an incredible scene. Say what you will about Spectre. Everybody tends to love that scene with Mr. White. The Dior jacket, the beanie, the gloves, everything. And of course, this end peel sweater, which 
is a replica. I mean, just line for line, movement for movement. This is a size medium and it fits me like it would him because they made it for the film. I mean, they've got that connection. So from a, from a James Bond connection, it's undeniable. But it goes a little bit further with the emotional connection. First of all, I love that scene. I mean, if I was to pick out any scene in Spectre that I could watch over and over on a loop, it would be probably that scene. I just think it's so well done. The dialogue, it's, it's not this big, bombastic action orientation. It's subtle, but it's so Bond-esque. And I love those moments between those two characters. Also, my wife and I visited, we actually visited that Mr. White house, um, Lake Otisi, and it was amazing. It was just an amazing day, mountain climbing and walking along the lake and taking pictures. And we were practically the only ones there. I mean, it's just amazing. So. This has so much emotional bond connection to me. And I don't have to tell you, probably because of the ribbing and, and it's, it's chunky and it's keeping me incredibly warm. I mean, the warmth level is off the charts. And I have tons of blue stuff, but not a ton of this Fumo gray. So the gray breaks it up a little bit. You know, it's got this comfortable neckline that some, some, some things in my past, these turtlenecks would like be like someone choking me. This is nice and loose, probably from wearing it so much. So yeah, I, I got to tell you, this is the sweater that I probably have grabbed the most in the last few years, certainly since 2015 when I got it. Because for me, it's timeless. It's classic. It doesn't look like fashion. It looks like style. It has that connection. It's got the warmth, but you can layer it. It breathes. I've been in very, very hot rooms, parties where I'm wearing this and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm wearing cashmere. Am I going to be sweating? And of course not because it breathes extremely well. Yet I go outside and I'm warm. So this is like that, that miracle sweater. And that's, that's the problem comparing it with everything else that's come before this thing, as, although the other ones had different layers and maybe were a little bit more warm and maybe, you know, I don't know, from an accuracy standpoint, this one to me wins. It does, it wins. And, and I wasn't going to pick a winner, but it wins for me as, you know, the best utility, best go-to, best warmth, best connection to bond, badass moment, all those things, probably because it's very subjective. And that's the thing about the <laughs> tested, you know, it's not a scientific test. That's the conclusion. There isn't this objective parameters, just like bond. What is your favorite actor? What is your favorite film? What's your favorite look? It is what you bring to the table. There's a, there's a great Yoda saying in Empire Strikes Back before Luke goes into the cave, you know, Luke goes, what's in there? And Yoda goes, only what you take in with you. That's Bond. It's only what you take in with you. So because I've taken so much in with me around this sweater, this is my favorite and it wins. It's my channel. I could say anything I want about it. No, really, it does. It does. So I have to go with this. But you know something? Let's let's head inside. OK, getting getting my getting my feelings back in my hands. Uh, for, hey, first of all, thanks for hanging in there. I know this was a very specific and complete one, but th that's what we're all about. We wanted to make sure that we tested these out. We gave it an evaluation because many of you evaluate them yourselves and you're kind of like ranking. Now, here's the beauty of it. Opinion. Everybody has one. And I actually read and care about yours. So down below, give me your opinion. What is your favorite Bond sweater? Maybe we haven't covered your favorite one. We'll list that too. And why is it your favorite? What, what is it about that sweater? Maybe it's the look in the movie or the scene that's captured or it's, it's from your favorite movie or your favorite Bond actor, whatever that is, whatever intrinsically or functionally your connection to it is, let me know below. I'll read every single one of them and We'll come back to you with another tested. There's so many of them that we can do. Tested suits. That would be an interesting one. Let me work on it. All right. In the meantime, this has been David Zariski for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.